There are two types of professionals right now. Those who think with AI occasionally and those who think with AI by default. The second group, the AI natives, are getting results that are magnitudes better with much less effort and in less time. And in the next nine minutes, I'm gonna give you the exact system to make you AI native. And this is not tied to a specific tool or trend. So you'll walk away with a framework that you can use today and for years to come. I'm Ali Salem. I work as a director in a tech company. And on this channel, I will help you turn tech and finance into your personal advantage. This video is going to be like espresso, short, intense, and may cause some overconfidence in your abilities for the coming six hours. The key to becoming AI native is to have a repeatable system that cuts through all the noise and the information overload and ensures that you become proficient and stay proficient over time. That system is called AIM, Assess, Implement, Master. Starting with Assess, it has three parts. Step one is identifying the friction points. So think about your day or week and try to identify where it feels slow, repetitive, or just unnecessarily painful. Just jot down high friction tasks that you would like to make easier. The second step is to define the desired outcomes. For each task on the list, ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? Is it to increase productivity? Is it to improve quality? And optional but helpful, group your tasks into categories. And third, set what's out of scope. Not everything needs AI, and honestly, some things shouldn't. If it's easier just to knock it out yourself, or if it's too personal to give to a machine, just skip it and set it to out of scope. Spend no more than 10 to 15 minutes for your initial setup of the assess step. At this point, you should have three to five high friction tasks that are prime candidates for your AI support. And this is gonna be your launch pad. Moving on to the second part of the AIM framework. This is going to be the most information dense section, so stay with me. Let's start off by picking tools that fit the list you just created. Now, don't overthink it, you're not picking a life partner. If you already have a go-to like Perplexity or Claude, just stick with it as long as it covers your needs. If you're brand new to this, just go with ChatGPT. It's a strong general purpose tool that will cover 90% of what you need. Let's move on to the second step of the implement framework, which is to apply the baseline skills. Starting off with prompt engineering, for most of you, this is where you will see the biggest gains. Now there are full courses on prompt engineering and if you have the time for it, please go ahead. But if not, no worries, I got you covered. There's a simple framework that I use myself. It will get you 80% of the way there. It's called PACE. Starting off with persona, who should the AI act as? This helps steer the response in the right direction, like casting the right expert for the job. Skip it and your financial advisor AI might start recommending lottery ticket as your next investment. Next is action. This is where you describe the job at hand. Be direct, be specific. The clearer your instruction, the better the result. After that comes context. This is where you give the AI the relevant information it needs. The kind of stuff a human would need in order to do a decent job. For example, I'm a 35 year old male, 193 centimeters, 105 kilograms, 20% body fat, or let's say 8% if we're rounding a bit generously. I train three times a week and sleep six to seven hours a night. Wow, I really like this version of myself. And lastly, examples. This is where you tell the AI how you want it to present the response. Do it right and you can use the result immediately without having to do any data cleaning or augmenting the output. And that's the pace framework. <laughs> now, if you're somewhat into training, you probably know that fat loss actually comes down to three things. Diet, training and sleep. And this leads me to the next topic. A common mistake people do is that they try to cram everything into one giant prompt. Let's say we've just built our diet plan and now we want to optimize both our training and sleep plan. We could of course ask for all three in one go, but that's a bad idea because breaking your requests into sequence prompts will elevate the results significantly. Three key reasons. First, the smaller and more focused your prompt, the better the output. Second, you get to iterate. If something looks off, you can adjust it before moving on to the next part. Way more efficient than fixing a 2000 word mess. Third, a technicality most people don't know, there are limits on response length. If you squeeze too much into one prompt, it will get truncated. Here you can see an example of me trying to get ChatGPT to deliver a presentation on a very controversial topic. The output is capped. Now this will happen with GPT, Gemini and Claude. They're all subject to token limits and various processing guardrails. So even if your prompt is perfect, longer outputs will still take a quality hit. In short, sequence your prompts. If this is clicking for you and you want more frameworks like this, hit subscribe. 
I make videos like this every week and I'd love to have you along for the next one. Let's move on to the third part of the implement section. I'll be using ChatGPT in this walkthrough, but the core principle remains the same. So if you're using any other model, just figure out how the denotation translates. If the number comes first, like ChatGPT 4.0, that's a multimodal model, best for general purpose use. Toggle this on by default. If the letter comes first, like 03, that means that it's a reasoning model. These are optimized for accuracy and step-by-step -step logic. Great for things like validating financial calculations or cross-checking your own work. And if it says Mini, it just means that it's faster, cheaper, with trimmed down capabilities. Ignore it for now unless you're building agents. Moving on to settings, use deep research when you want a comprehensive analysis. They will trigger like a 10 minute calculation. So use it if you want a really thorough analysis. For web searches, use it when you want fresh information that is synthesized by the LLM. If you're just looking for tomorrow's weather forecast, just Google. Canvas is super useful when you want to build and refine and iterate something over time. It allows you to inline edits in the text and you get access to your version history. And the last topic on the implement framework is to create a prompt library. Once you find prompts that work well, save them. You can store them in Notion, Google Docs, or any other preference. Just make it easy to find and reuse. Later on, you can explore more advanced options like text expanders. These let you trigger entire prompts with a few keystrokes. I use something called Espanso, if you're curious. Block off 10 minutes to set this up. You basically just need to pick your tools and decide where you're gonna store your prompts. The remaining techniques we covered should just be applied as you go. Now the final step is to enhance your system without burning you out. This is where most people drop off. They either stop improving or they try to keep up with everything and fry their brain in the process. But we're not doing that. We're gonna approach this in two parts. Part one is controlling your learning feed. Pick one or maximum two trusted sources for your AI updates. It could be a YouTube channel like this one or a podcast. Personally, I like the AI Daily Brief and the Everyday AI Podcast. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check them out. Then pick a cadence. Once a week is enough, more is obviously better. You can start with something as small as 15 minutes per week. Now part two is how we use that new input to refine our system. First, I want you to assess your current scope. Review if your current approach is working well or if you need to refine anything. Second, move over to tools. Review if the tools you're using are truly the best fit. And if you decide to switch, make sure to do it intentionally. Pace your rate of change. There is a switching cost. So don't just change because a new shiny toy came out. Set aside 30 minutes per week, 15 minutes to get your updates and 15 minutes to enhance your system. That's all you need to stay current, stay effective and keep leveling up without burning out. And if you've made it this far, you have officially watched my first YouTube video. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for trusting me with your time. I hope you found this both valuable and hopefully a bit enjoyable. And if you did, do hit the subscribe button. If there is a specific topic, use case or question you'd like me to explore further, just drop it in the comments. I'll be reading every single one and I'll build a future episode based on that input. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.